good morning. I want to welcome you on this Sunday morning to our pastor's Bible study at Forest Lake Baptist Church. On this Sunday, we are wrapping up the study of Isaiah. Uh, and so we hope that you have enjoyed this study in this magnificent Old Testament book. I know that our Bible study teachers have commented about it here as we meet on site. <clears throat> we know that our friends who are part of our online family are also uh, following these Bible studies, and so we trust that you have enjoyed it and that the Lord has spoken to you in it. As we look this morning to uh, Isaiah chapter 65, we will be talking about the restoration of all things at the end of time. Now, in the backdrop of this, it is helpful to recall that in Genesis chapter 3, we read the story of the fall of mankind, of that time when sin entered into the human race, and along with that, sickness and death, uh, treachery and deceit, uh, violence and bloodshed, all of the negative things that happen uh, in the environment around us and all of the hurtful and destructive things that happen in relationships between individuals and groups of people. All of those things came to pass as a result of the sin of Adam and Eve. Likewise, as sin entered into the world, the destruction that that caused in other parts of life uh, were part of what happened there were included in what happened there. And so <clears throat> because of, of that, we can understand by contrast the, the promise of what we read in Isaiah 65. And so let's just take a few minutes to look at three big pieces of what the prophet is saying to us here. The first is that the new Jerusalem, the new heavens and the new earth, uh, that which God uh, brings about at the end of time and when He restores all things will be a place of joy. See, I will create new heavens and a new earth. The former things will not be remembered, nor will they come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I will create. For I will create Jerusalem to be a delight in its people, a joy. When we look at this, we find of course, that there's a promise that is set in a context that the Old Testament people of Israel could understand. Uh, they uh, look to Jerusalem as the holy city, as the focal point of their religious devotion in terms of, geographic, uh, of geography. And beyond the geographic terms, it was the religious capital of their life. And so the destruction of Jerusalem uh, that occurred on several different instances was something that was a painful, hurtful memory for them. And so as Isaiah presents this, the Lord will bring a new Jerusalem that is completely restored. And so this brings joy to them in terms of that place that is the focal point of their worship. And likewise, it brings joy to their people he says that their people will also be a delight and a joy. He says, I will rejoice over Jerusalem and take delight in my people. The sound of weeping and of crying will be heard in it no more. So there's this promise of joy that comes to us as God restores all things. <clears throat> the next promise that comes is the promise of prosperity, beginning in verse 21. They will build houses and dwell in them. They will plant vineyards and eat their fruit. No longer will they build houses and others live in them or plant and others eat. For as the days of a tree, so will be the days of my people. My chosen ones will long enjoy the work of their hands. They will not labor in vain, nor will they bear children doomed to misfortune, for they will be a people blessed by the Lord, they and their descendants with them. You know, there's some subtle things in here that reminds us of the deepest needs of humanity. 
we look around at the world today, <clears throat> at least my wife and I do, having this conversation, and other adults of my age look around and at the the mess that the world is in. I mean, you know, our country is a very divided country at this time. There's strife in a lot of communities. There are wars going on in different parts of the world. There is a ever-present reminder in the news of the fallenness and the violence in the hearts of humanity. <clears throat> and we have this conversation where we say, you know what, I may not have much longer left that I've got to deal with this, but I am concerned about my children and my grandchildren. It's a very normal human response and a very natural response, and one in which we look out and we acknowledge the reality of what's going on around us and recognize that someone else is going to have to deal with it, and it may be worse than what we're dealing with right now. Well, this promise of God in terms of the end times and the restoration of Jerusalem, uh, symbolizing uh, God's restoration of the earth and heavens. Uh, this restoration speaks of the prosperity that will come to those who know the Lord. And he, Isaiah illustrates it in ways that we understand. He said, no longer will they build houses and others live in them. You know, we've all done those projects, those things that we worked hard on and took pride in, and then we enjoyed the benefit of that. And, and so you can imagine the frustration someone would feel about building a home for themselves and for their family, and then someone else just comes in and takes it over. And so he says this type of frustration and disappointment will no longer be a part of daily living in this place as God restores it. And so we understand this at a number of different levels. And he says they will bear children, and those children will not be born into misfortune. There's a great promise there for all who walk with the Lord and all who look to Him, a promise of prosperity as God restores all things. And finally, it will be a place of peace, beginning in verse 24. Before they call, I will answer. While they are still speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb will feed together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox, and dust will be the serpent's food. They will neither harm nor destroy on all of my holy mountain, says the Lord. You know, the wolf and the lamb are natural enemies at this point. Actually, it, as we live today, the lamb does not see itself as the enemy of the wolf, and the wolf does not see itself as the enemy of the lamb in terms of consciousness, but one is the predator and the other is the victim. And the lamb is defenseless, the wolf is vicious. And so this contrast says to us that when the Lord restores everything in the final day, that there will be peace among those who formerly were in destructive and adversarial relationships. The wolf and the lamb will basically feed together and the lion will eat straw like an ox. Now, lions are carnivorous and uh, they eat meat. And so to say the lion will eat straw like an ox is to emphasize that the lion will no longer be a predator uh, looking to kill in order that it may eat. And so the peace that God brings in the last day will be a peace that defies anything that any of us have experienced in our lifetime. So the question becomes this. As you've read through the book of Isaiah and studied through this, uh, one of our teachers commented that he had learned a lot from this, that it really put him to a new kind of test in terms of his personal study and growth. Because the Old Testament was the Bible that Jesus preached, and it speaks to us with the voice of God and of the reality of God's work and activity. And so the question becomes, as it always does, where are you in your personal relationship with the Lord? When you read this passage, do you find these promises of joy and prosperity and peace 
to be promises that ring true for you because you have a relationship with God in which the very things He promises to His people are things that will become reality in your life. Well, if you don't, if the promises that the Lord brings to us here seem somehow far away or distant, it may be that you very well need to move back toward God in your personal relationship. There may have been a time long ago when you trusted Christ as your personal Savior and you've drifted away. It's a good time to come back. It may be that you've never trusted Christ as your personal Savior, that you've never looked to the Lord uh, with a sense of dependence and faith, with the idea that salvation comes only through a relationship with Him. So whatever the circumstances of your life and whatever your spiritual condition, I want you to know that the promises of restoration that come to you and to me in the Scriptures are promises that come from the Lord God, Creator of heaven and earth, King of the universe, Sovereign of eternity. And we use those titles, and when we delve into what they mean, we discover that He is the Lord God who calls us to Himself. And so my prayer is that you will hear His voice within the words of His Word and answer His call to a relationship with Him in faith. And that in so doing, you'll experience the peace and the joy and the prosperity that God provides for those who are His people. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, this day for Your Word and what it teaches us, for the opportunity to look into it and to share it. I pray for each one who hears this day that you would bless them with understanding. And for any who need to respond to you in faith, I pray, Father, you would call them to salvation and to forgiveness and to new life in the Lord Jesus Christ. In His name we pray. Amen.